Okay, welcome. I think we are online. Everything is up and running. It is so delightful to have you all here and our audience at home uh, joining us for this season announcement. It has been two and a half years two and a half years since we've done anything like this. And this last year and a half obviously has shown us a lot of things about how important this community is and how important the performing arts are for this, uh, for this community and, and for this region. Um, the the Lensic has been super busy in the last year and a half. We have done countless online shows, both professional performances that were done throughout the country. We brought artists to the stage to do live performances that we, that we shared with our audience every week, and lots and lots of things to engage our audience, but there is nothing that is better than having this room filled again after a year and a half. That's right. It's, I, thank you. And you're, you're absolutely right. There is something, you know, this is, this is why we do performing arts, is so that you, can, that you can share an experience with other people. And the first events that we have done this year have been absolutely breathtaking. Music sounds better than you remember before. And being in a room with people is, is strangely more exhilarating than you remember it could possibly be. It has, it has its, its uh, challenges as well, but I really feel like our staff has dealt with these things beautifully. The Lensic is the first of the venues in the state of New Mexico to require the vaccine or to require a negative test. Thank you. Which is also fundamentally important to what this experience is. It, and, and again, we are a community-supported performing arts center, so the importance of allowing people to come into this space to share an experience is, 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 is a, a core principle of what we want to do here. So the vaccine, obviously an important thing, and it's the best way, it's the most foundational way for us to ensure that people are safe, but also providing for negative tests and to allow for children to still come into the theater, following the school guidelines where they just keep their masks on throughout. This is a place where the full family should feel comfortable and that the programs should be accessible for, for everyone to come here. So that's step number one. The other thing that I wanted to, to just quickly say is that as a building, this is an excellent place to come and see a show. Our air handling system in the Lensic is exceptional. The outside air comes in through, passes through a MERV 13 filter, which is the, the filter that the CDC recommends uh, for venues, and the air circulates Every 13 minutes, this room has entirely new air in it. The CDC recommends every 20 minutes, so we're gaining another full cycle on, on what is required or what is preferred for, for an indoor venue. This is a very safe place to come and see a show. And I want to say a quick thing about the MERV 13 filters, which we actually had in place before they were recommended by the CDC. On Met Live mornings, the burger stand next door would start cooking burgers and fries at about 11 o'clock, which apparently is not part of a normal Met experience. <laughs> Can you believe it? So we got these filters in order to diffuse that smell and make this uh, a, a better place for our patrons to be on MetLive mornings. So you can thank the burger stand for getting us ahead in that, in that area as well. Exactly, it's, it's totally good. So our season theme this year throughout has been we're better together and obviously this just goes right to what we're saying here is that um, th this is what this place is for. This is what this, you know, the role of the Lensic in this community is, is a place where people can gather and they can share things together. So we have already announced half a year. Some of those shows have already passed. Uh, we're going to quickly go through some of those things as well and then also announce the new shows that will take place mostly in the second half of the year. Before we get started, though, I want to thank a number of people. First of all, I want to thank the Lensic Board. If the board members who are here can quickly raise their hands, thank you. If you're at home, I hope you'll raise your hand and your spouse will give you a round of applause as well. Um, but thank you for, for all of the support that you have given us throughout. Obviously, we need to thank our staff as well. And the staff has gone through a number of different cycles in making this happen. A big round of applause for them. From the time that the doors had to close, a spring and a half ago, I guess, um, it, it, 
you know, the, the creativity and the way that the staff has come together to continue to engage this community in the performing arts has been exceptional. And, and our new staff that has come on right now are all gems. And I know that you probably have not met a lot of these people, but they will become very familiar to you and you will love them. And uh, we're very happy that we have this staff together as we're moving into the next phase. Our ambassadors, our volunteers who work as ushers have been so important in getting the doors reopened for us. Uh, beginning this last summer and the work that they've done in helping to to police the COVID policies and ensure that guests feel comfortable and reacclimate themselves and being in a full room of people has been monumental so I'm going to ask for a round of applause for them as well and obviously for all of you our donors we could not have done this without you to go from all from the point where all of our earned income went away and the only way that we were able to continue the programs that we were doing was through the support of this community. It was the way that you stepped up. It was the way that the rest of Santa Fe stepped up to allow the Lensing to keep doing its work. Uh, it got us through this year and I think helped to provide a little bit of, of constancy and, and happiness for the people who were stuck at home during that time. So I'd like to give myself a big round of applause to you and thank you for being with us here today. Um, we have some great sponsors as we're moving into this next year, Hutton Broadcasting, New Mexico Experiences. Uh, we have uh, uh, Lensic Presents support as well from the Brown Foundation. And uh, um, the support that, that, that you all give us helps us to do a number of different things. It help us, helps us to moderate ticket prices so that this, this is a space that everyone can come to regardless of their financial background. It supports the Lensic and its community and educational engagement, which has been ongoing throughout, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second, and also makes the Lensic feel welcoming to all. So thanks for all of that support. A quick thing about our education programs. Education is a foundation of a lot of the things that we do here. And in 2019, in our typical year, we ended with 18,000 kids engaged in arts education programs. In 2020, when schools were closed and kids were at home, we almost got to that number again because we, we knew that this was such an important part of what we do. We got to 16,000 kids engaged in online activities, some things that were done in the theater, but really made a difference. And this, this goes on, we'll, again, we'll talk about this a little bit more, but I, again, to the staff and the way that we were able to engage with the schools and continue to provide performing arts experiences that help support the teachers in their virtual classrooms and give the kids something that was a little bit more exciting to watch on their laptops at home. Um, as we move into this next year, I'm going to move through the school things here pretty quickly. Uh, right now, the schools are not allowing for our school matinee program to start. That the field trips are still not in the, in the program for the public schools. There is great news that hopefully will change that as vaccines will be available for students from ages 5 to 11 shortly. Um, and obviously this will make some changes in the way that we're able to interact with the schools. For the time being though, we, have, we made a commitment last year that we were going to continue with our virtual education programs. For this year, at least, this is something that will allow us to engage with all of the schools that we normally would see here at the Lensic. But this is something that we're planning to, to continue from here on in. And the, the reason for that is that we found that there are a number of districts, a number of school systems around New Mexico who have no opportunity to have a performing arts experience in their day. So we are working, working with the New Mexico Public Education Department to provide these resources to students across the state of New Mexico. We have a big email going out next year to all 20,000 teachers in the state of New Mexico to provide them with the information they need to sign up for virtual programs that we'll be providing this year and in the years going forward. Um, one of those is starting next week. Uh, the, the first two slides here are things that happened last year, the first two photos there. But the last one, Agua Es Vida, is a terrific show that combines music and storytelling and dance to really look at Mexican traditions that, that have uh, obviously informed a lot of life in New Mexico as well. It is a beautiful piece and it will be something that uh, students in Santa Fe will be able to engage with uh, and actually around our region will be able to engage in uh, over the next two weeks. We're very excited about that. Um, 
Another part of uh, our program that is going to be continuing very shortly uh, are master classes with Lensic Presents Artists. We have already had some engagement with students in the public schools and artists who have performed on the Lensic stage with the performance of Manahatta that was done by Silver Bullet Productions a little over a week ago on Indigenous Peoples Day weekend. Um, but we have a couple of things that are up upcoming. Uh, uh, American Ballet Theater in November is going to be doing a workshop uh, with students from uh, schools in our region and then uh, Branford Marsalis is also going to be doing a master class with students uh, uh, at the Lensic uh, at his performance on November 1 so those are coming here quickly too uh, our Lensic Class Acts and Angel Tickets programs are, is a great follow-up with this because all of the students who engage with these education programs will have an opportunity to come and see the program at the Lensic as well. So we'll be inviting the students who work with Branford during the day to come see his concert uh, on the 1st. Uh, same with American Ballet Theater Studio Company. Um, and uh, obviously that's a very important part of the experience for them to not only have that one-on-one -on -one with the artist but to see them do their job. Uh, from the stage. Um, our technical theater internship program also began. This last Tuesday we have 12 students from four different Santa Fe high schools and one home school uh, who are going to be starting their year-long program learning all the ins and outs about our technical theater program. This is a weekly uh, program that the students come to at the Lensic working with our staff. It is a terrific program that has has guided a lot of students into professional careers in technical theater, uh, working on Broadway, working in Broadway tours in a number of venues around the nation. Uh, so we're very excited to get that up and running again. Our Future Voices program has been going on throughout. We were able to do all of these programs virtually over the last year and a half. We've continued to have our awards ceremony uh, uh, each year. Uh, we moved some of the technology so that students could use the cell phones in their pockets to take the photos and videos that they would submit for awards and prizes. Uh, knowing that that technology was there and giving them a way to be creative while they were uh, doing their, their classroom studies at home. Um, and uh, we will be uh, hopefully this next spring uh, having that same award ceremony, perhaps even in a hybrid model with some kids here and, and other kids at home so that we can celebrate the great work uh, that they've done in creating films and, uh, and photos. Um, also on the uh, November 15, Kevin Spencer, the magician and educator who we love so well, who comes back to the Santa Fe twice a year every year to work with autistic students in the public schools. He uses magic and creativity as a way to engage them and their teachers, tying uh, this creative thought into their, into their core curriculum as an incredible way to advance their education and give the teachers some support. Kevin is a miracle worker. He did all of this, uh, his programs with the students online last year, but he is going to be in person on the uh, 15th working with the students. And the day before, he starts going into the public schools. He is going to be doing a low sensory public performance at the Lensic. I invite all of you to come and see that as well. It is a spectacular thing. The low sensory performances are very important for particularly for kids on the autism spectrum that that too much information going into the head is a little jangling for them. When you come to a low sensory performance, and we have done low sensory performances at the Lensic as well a couple of years ago with Circus Luminous, uh, the lights are a little brighter, it's a little quieter in the room, kids can get up and move around as they need to. Kevin's magic show consists of magic tricks that are all laid out on a big table on the front of the stage, a lot of sleight of hand, involving the kids in the process, but it's a great way to see a live magic performance, to engage with a perfor uh, performer, and it's something that families would be able to uh, come and enjoy with them as well, whether or not uh, their students have, uh, have low sensory issues. It's a public performance that's, again, available to anyone, and we are presenting it free of charge. Uh, tickets will be required, but it is for free because we want to ensure that kids get an opportunity to come and see the show. And I want to thank our sponsors, the, the NEA, the City of Santa Fe's uh, Arts and Culture Department, Enterprise Bank and Trust, and the Theater Defense Fund is the company that we work with. It's an organization that we work with to help support these low sensory performances. Um, a couple of other quick th things here. Uh, student performances. Uh, over the quarantine, 
uh, beginning in the spring of 2020, we recognized that there were a lot of particularly upperclassmen in their schools who may be going on to college who were missing that opportunity to do that final performance, the thing that they'd been gunning for over the last four years of their high school. So we opened up our stage uh, to bring the students in here to work with their teachers, get that performance on film, or not on film, listen to me, on video, lost total track of time, that's fantastic, get it on video and share it with our audience so that the students and their, fr their friends and families would be able to see that final performance. We actually, during this time as well, we worked with Santa Fe High School. Uh, their amazing drama director was the only teacher, the only drama teacher in New Mexico to do all four of the intended plays that they had scheduled for the school. He included in that was a musical, and the musical was really hard to do. Uh, there was no technology. You've all been on Zoom, and there's no way to sing songs with people on Zoom. It just doesn't work. So we brought them in using the same protocols that we did for our student showcases to record all of the students in the musical, and then in post-production, our staff helped them all pull this together so that they would be able to piece the musical together. And it was wonderful. And uh, so that was one of the things that we were super proud of. But we are looking forward to getting students back on stage and, uh, and support supporting them in their performance lives as well. So we've made it through all the education things. Let's quickly talk about some of the upcoming events. Uh, as many of you know, the Metropolitan Opera Live series has already started. Um, we have another performance coming up this next weekend, the very exciting Fire Shut Up in My Bones, which is a, a, a new piece that has had a lot of critical acclaim. It's written by jazz composer Terrence Blanchard. Um, that is going to be uh, here this coming Saturday uh, with uh, uh, the live performance in the uh, morning at 11 o'clock and then a, an encore performance yet that evening. There are eight other Metropolitan Opera programs to follow and uh, um, we're super excited to see those Met events here. It's nice to have that music again. So I want to say quickly here as well, normally we would have our National Theater Live performances as a part of the year too. The National Theater has not yet restored their performances in, in London due to the, the pandemic. When those programs come back, we will, uh, we will get those back on stage as soon, or on screen as soon as possible. But uh, for now, I hope you will enjoy the Met Live broadcast that will go on through June this next year. Next Tuesday, uh, we have this fantastic show called Potted Potter. Uh, this is a show that has been touring for a number of years now where they take all seven Harry Potter books and through with two performers, two, uh, they tell all of the story in 70 minutes. There is a live Quidditch game that happens uh, in the process. It's a total family-friendly show and, and something that all of you would enjoy as well. It is very funny. If you're familiar with the Harry Potter series, this is something you will definitely enjoy. Their truck is already in the back, filled with magic tricks, and a room of requirement and wands and all of those things, I'm sure, as well. So uh, if, you, if you are interested, that program is this coming uh, Tuesday. We have some event sponsorship support from Hotel Santa Fe to make that happen, so Tuesday night at 7.30. I already mentioned that Branford Marsalis is going to uh, be with us on November 1. We have a normal partnership with uh, Outpost Performance Space in Albuquerque for the New Mexico Jazz Festival, which usually takes place that final week of July each year. Again, with the timing and scheduling of this year, it was not possible to make the festival happen as normal. So what we're doing is extending the festival over the course of the year. Branford is going to be one of our jazz festival events, as Chris Body was to open our season in September. Um, there are some great event sponsorship uh, for this as well from Jack Cotts. 
from Nicholas Potter Books, Bookstore, uh, Palace Prime, the National Endowment for the Arts, and Hotel Santa Fe. Uh, Brantford is the eldest of the very talented Marcellus uh, family and uh, a saxophone player. His quartet has been with him for almost 20 years. They are incredible, impeccable musicians who just love playing with each other. And if you want to talk about a high class night of jazz music, uh, that's what you're going to get from Branford Marcellus. Tickets are almost gone for this show. So if you're interested in seeing him, I hope you'll get your tickets early. And I'm going to show you a little video of Branford in performance here as well so you can get a taste. Mighty good. <laughs> so Brant from Marcellus on November 1. American Ballet Theater Studio Company will be performing with us on uh, November 11. They will actually be in town for most of that week. They'll arrive in town on Tuesday evening and they'll be doing some education programs in our community. Uh, the American Ballet Theater Studio Company is the junior company at American Ballet Theater. 80% um, of the American Ballet Theater's company, including a great number of their principals, including Misty Copeland, are alumni of the studio company. So what you're seeing in this group is, is tomorrow's major Broadway stars. They are impeccable dancers. And the feeling that I had, I went to, the, to their studio a few years ago to watch a rehearsal, is a little like watching women's gymnastics at the Olympics to see people at the youngest age performing at this incredibly high level. And they are doing a, a wonderful mix both of, of classic and contemporary uh, ballet performance. Um, the support that we have from this comes from Katherine Oppenheimer, from uh, Westaff Grant, and from Heritage Hotels. And uh, I'm going to show you a little sample of these incredibly uh, talented young performers here, too. I know that some of you were able to join us a few months ago when we did one of our backstage pass virtual programs with American Ballet Theater Studio Company, and, and we were joined there by one of the dancers, uh, their artistic director and a choreographer, Lauren Levette, uh, who talked about her work with the company, and, and we asked her what the difference was for her working with these younger dancers with anyone else, and she said, if anything else, she said, it's essentially, it is exactly the same. If, any, if anything, they are more fearless. Than, than the regular dancers who she would, she would work with. Um, it's, we're very excited about having this, uh, this company here and, and uh, uh, sharing some time with them over the course of that week. As we move into December, we're turning our eyes to the holidays as well. Uh, Jose James was supposed to be with us on the 2020-21 season. Uh, we had booked him to do a concert. He had a, a terrific record uh, of Bill Withers songs that was just like the most 
heartwarming, fantastic thing you've ever heard. Uh, Jose is a, is, a, is a jazz performer by label. Uh, there's a lot of R&B influence in, in his life. Uh, his first records were produced by Bobby McFerrin's son, and he spent a lot of time with that family as well, but he has this rich, wonderful baritone voice and just incredible jazz timing. Uh, we obviously missed the chance to, to bring him in with the Bill Withers program, but he has a new Christmas record that is going to be released on November 19. There are a couple of tracks from that record that have already come out. Um, I saw him live at the Hollywood Bowl a couple of years ago, and he's just spectacular. An amazing performer, and I really would encourage you to check him out a little bit more. Uh, as well. There is support for this show again as a jazz festival event from the National Endowment for the Arts and from Hotel Santa Fe. And uh, I, just a little snippet so you can hear Jose singing some of his, uh, his Christmas music. Thank you so much. Good evening. Happy holidays, everybody. We're going to let it snow. Oh, the weather outside is frightful. But the fire's so delightful And since we're no place to go Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow Doesn't show signs of stopping And I've brought some corn for popping Lights are turned way down low Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow When the finally kiss goodnight How I ain't going out in the storm You really hold me tight All the way home I'll be warm Fire slowly dying my dear, we're still goodbye. Long as you love me so, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Oh, well, the outside is frightful, but the fire is so delightful. Since we no place to go, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Doesn't show signs of stopping, and I brought some more corn for popping. Lights are turned way down low. Let it snow, let it snow. When we finally kiss goodnight, how I hate going out, but you hold me tight. All the way home, I'll be warm. Fire slowly dying, my dear, we're still goodbye. Long as you love me so, let it snow. He's super smooth, and really, I'm really excited to hear this record when it comes out here in a couple weeks. Uh, but again, Jose James, part of the New Mexico Jazz Festival events that will go on throughout the year on uh, December 9. Um, a big name star that's going to be coming is uh, Seth Meyers. You know him from the television and uh, uh, his late night show that he, that he hosts. Um, he is coming to the Lensic on his first Western tour in 10 years. And uh, uh, Seth is incredibly funny. We are, uh, it, I would also recommend if you're interested in seeing him here uh, that you get your tickets soon because tickets are going very fast for this one as well. Uh, but uh, we have support for this program from Century Bank and from Hotel Santa Fe and uh, uh, a good night of comedy right before Christmas, which has its own, of course, comedy uh, to go along with as well as, as I'm sure you all know. So anyway. Um, so rounding out the year, and, and yay, uh, is, is what is a holiday tradition that we share an evening of classical music uh, under the great guidance of Joe Illick. And this is the fourth year that we have uh, shared the New Year's holiday with, with Joe and his uh, uh, incredible uh, artistic vision. And uh, we have great support for this show as well from Jenna Browning from uh, the anonym, an anonymous fund at the Santa Fe Community Foundation, from Connie and David Gerard DiCarlo, and for Nancy, from Nancy and Raymond Lutz. And uh, Joe is here, so I'm not gonna talk about his holiday show. I would love it if you could come up and you could tell us a little bit about what's upcoming this year. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. I can't even begin to say what have we all been through, right? And uh, I wanted to create a program for you all that in some way honored us, remembered us, and gave us strength and purpose to move forward. So uh, fortunately, some of the greatest composers of the last 200 years helped me with this. And um, 
the, the beginning of the whole curating of this was Augustine Hadelich because he, as you know, has performed here twice at the Lenzik with me, uh, the Mendelssohn Concerto a few years ago and then two years ago the Tchaikovsky Concerto. And uh, he is one of the most in-demand violinists in the world, so I asked him, would he consider this? And he said, I don't even have to consider it, just tell me what to do and I'll be there. So he loves you, he loves Santa Fe, he loves performing in this hall. And uh, he said he would most love to perform the violin concerto by Sibelius. I don't know if you know this, but uh, there are a lot of great violin concerti, but most of those great composers were not violinists. And uh, Brahms and Beethoven sought the advice of violinists when they wrote their violin concertos. Sibelius himself was a concert violinist. And so it is truly the greatest marriage of a wonderful composer who knew that instrument inside out, everything that it could do. And it is a great favorite of violinists, but it's also a great favorite of audiences. So once I knew that, that was going to be, it will be, the second half of our program. And uh, the first half involves Polyphony Voices of New Mexico. That is this wonderful chorus that is drawn from all around New Mexico. And all three selections on the first half involve the chorus. The first selection will be Sibelius, his piece Finlandia, which is about a nine minute piece. It's a piece that was written oh, just before 1900 because his part of the world was in great turmoil, as we all are, and they all came through it. And so it's a very triumphant, celebratory piece. Uh, in the middle of it, there's a part that when you've heard it with orchestra um, has been done without chorus, but uh, Sibelius said, you know, I could take the liberty of adding a chorus. So we're gonna have a big chorus up here and uh, the part in the middle I've arranged for chorus and orchestra. So you'll hear the world premiere of this on New Year's Eve. And um, I'm going to have two performances, the 1 p.m. and the 5 p.m. The 1 p.m. you may all sing along. I'll have word sheets. You can wear your masks and sing or not wear your masks and sing because thank you, Joel. Everybody in this theater will be vaccinated. So that's the first number on the first half. The second number is the very opening section of Mozart's Requiem because we've all lost people who are near and dear to us. The country has lost over 700,000 people. The world has lost millions. And I feel it's a time for all of us together to remember and love all those people that are gone. Um, this was Mozart's last work. He wasn't able to live long enough to finish it. I suspect he knew he was writing it for himself and for all of us. And so we're gonna just do the very opening Requiem section of Mozart's Requiem, and then go into the final movement of uh, Beethoven's Ninth Symphony which I think is the most triumphant affirmation of humanity and love and Joel's slogan, together we're better, we're better together uh, than any other piece that has ever been written. So this is our concert. We'll do it twice, 1 p.m. and 5 p.m. I wanna thank all of you because we've done a lot of wonderful concerts up here on this stage, but truly this one has a significance that I can't even uh, begin to express. I've had the opportunity now in Fort Worth to do a live concert indoors for a full audience for the first time, and it's more powerful than I imagined. The hunger for live music, the need we all have for live music, and the fulfillment of hearing live music, great performance, hearing it all together is truly extraordinary and very healing. So thank you all so much. Thank you for being the wonderful audience and supporters and lovers of art that you are. And Joel, thank you for this incredible theater that keeps providing a wonderful space for us to do what we do and feel is so important and crucial to our lives. Anyway, thank you. I'll see you all on New Year's Eve.
Thank you so much, Joe. And we're super excited to have, uh, to have this performance back on stage again this year. Uh, Joe with the New Year's Eve Orchestra, believe it or not, on New Year's Eve. And uh, um, so a, a wonderful way to wrap up this year. So as we're getting into, uh, Jose James was new to the, to the lineup from what you've seen before. We're getting into the meat of the things that are, that are new to, to look at. As we move into 2022, uh, our first performance is a show called Tango Argentina. Uh, Marcos Alaya uh, has been touring for, for five years with, uh, with this program of, of Argentinian tango dancers. Uh, it has been a tremendous hit across Europe and Asia. Uh, they now have representation in the United States and they are doing their first North American tour. There are 12 dancers who will be performing. Uh, we're going to show you a video of this in a little bit, but the program looks at the foundations of tango music from uh, the streets of Buenos Aires uh, on through the contemporary uh, new energy that is going into tango dance. It should be a spectacular uh, program. Um, there is uh, support for this as well from New Mexico Arts uh, to make this program happen. And here is a little video of Tango Argentina. I'm sure a lot of you have seen tango programs before and what always happens is the music gets in your bones and then you go to sleep that night and you dream big thoughts of being able to dance like that, right? And uh, it's, it is so much fun. There, it is a, it is a, it, to see terrific tango dancers is, is something to really enjoy. And so this will be uh, our first program of 2022 uh, on January 20, Tango Argentina. We are then welcoming a Lensic favorite. Storm Large will be back with us on Valentine's Day of all, of all things. Uh, if you have not seen Storm Large perform at the Lensic in the past, you have really missed something. And I, I'm not going to show a video here because I know that a lot of you have seen her in the past. Uh, Storm has been a vocalist with the band Pink Martini. Uh, she was just a, a, a contestant on America's Got Talent um, and uh, has an incredible voice and an incredible style. And to have her here on, on Valentine's Day will be a terrific amount of fun. And believe it or not, we actually have education programming with her earlier in the day too. I know it is going to be super great. So Valentine's Day, put that in your uh, in your calendar. We have support from Westaff to make that happen, and uh, uh, having Storm back at the Lensic will truly feel like things have returned to normal. Um, we are also welcoming back another program that was a huge hit for us a couple of years ago. International Guitar Night it offers a new tour every year with four new guitarists. Um, when we were here in, when we last had the program here in 2019. We had a sold out house with, with impeccable guitar performances. And what happens is each artist comes out individually to play within their style. And then the rest of the night is totally unscripted with people coming together and they improvise with each other. And, and incredible music is made over the course of the evening. This year's lineup features Lula Reinhardt, who's from Germany who is a, uh, his specialty is Latin swing. Stephanie Jones from Australia, who is a contemporary classical guitarist. Uh, Alexander Misko 
from Russia who describes his style as two-handed tapping, and uh, Eleonora Strino from Italy who is a jazz guitarist. Um, it, is a, it is a terrific program, something that we uh, have, are really looking forward to having back because that last program was so exciting. And uh, uh, that will be on February 23. Again, support for this program from New Mexico Arts. And uh, I, I really encourage you to check them out and also to look up. We'll have some videos and things when all of these uh, uh, programs are posted on the web later this evening. Um, moving into uh, the pre-St. Patrick's Day mode here, Eileen Ivers will be coming to the Lensic on uh, February 26. Eileen was the original musical star of Riverdance. Uh, she is a multi-award-winning uh, uh, Celtic fiddler. And uh, this was a program we were again supposed to have in 2021, and we're very happy to have her uh, come to lead us into the St. Patrick's Day holiday. And here is a little... That is a look at Eileen Ivers. She, I have seen her perform twice in the past, and it is just a great night of Celtic music. She is an, uh, an incomparable uh, fiddler, and you'll have a terrific time. Everybody wants to be Irish once a year, right? Unless you're Irish, then you want to be Irish all the time, all year, which is great. So Eileen Ivers on February 26. Um, sticking with uh, uh, stringed instruments, we are also super happy to welcome back, back, welcome back Black Violin. That was trickier than I thought it was going to be. Uh, black Violin was at the Lensic back in 2017. Um, in, th these are both classically trained uh, string musicians. And what they have done with black violin is to challenge stereotypes. There are not a lot of black classical musicians in the world. And, you know, these two young men with their, you know, the, the violin and the viola on their back and how they've incorporated classical music into hip hop to engage audiences and to really introduce them to what, uh, what string music can sound like. Um, it was a thrilling show when we had them here. This was a show that was also supposed to come last season. And at the time that we booked the show, they had their new record, which is called Take the Stairs, uh, had just been released. And it was at the top of three different charts. It was on the pop charts, it was on the classical charts, and it was on the R&B charts, of all things. All three. And it was an incredible hit. And this is a group that connects so intimately with the audience who, audiences who are here. It is a show that you absolutely get wrapped up in their performance, and uh, we're really excited to have them back. Uh, we have support from Thornburg, uh, and again from New Mexico Arts to make that program possible, and we will have two performances on the 17th and 18th of March. That's a Thursday and Friday night, both at 7.30, and... Standing on the landmine and we're singing hallelujah Thrown into the end times and we're singing hallelujah Gonna take my, take my, take my for the future Baby, take my, take my, take my for the future Future, future Strong. 
never knew take this long. Super cool show. Black Violin again on March 17 and 18. We then move on to something completely different, the return of Drum Tao. This has been a Lensic favorite uh, uh, for, for many, many years. Uh, again, a program we were supposed to have before, but here we got them this, this coming year. They actually have stored their taiko drums in the United States for the last year, uh, finding their way back home and now, now heading back out on this uh, international tour. Uh, on March 31, they will be at the Lensic. Um, and uh, I'm going to show this next thing because, again, I think it's really good to have something to aspire to uh, in your physicality and uh, um, precision. They really, they really show everybody up, I think, is what comes from this. So here's a little look at Drum Tao. Super great. Again, Drum Tao, and that is going to be on March 31. Um, another program rolling its way into, uh, into this current season is Ballet Folklorico de Mexico, de Amalia Hernandez. Uh, this is a, uh, a show, th th this is the premier folkloric dance company in Mexico. They have been around for 70 years um, in 22, and uh, it is a program that will bring 75 performers to this stage, dancers and musicians, colorful outfits, incredible performances, a variety of different performances that will take place over the course of the evening. This is an absolute must see, um, particularly in an intimate space like ours with that much grandeur going on. Uh, Ballet Folklorico de Mexico is performing on April 7. I'm gonna give you a quick look at them here too. Great look at some incredible performance that's coming up with Ballet Folklorico de Mexico. So we have one more show to talk about. And uh, so um, millions of YouTube viewers can't be wrong. Okay, so they can, but in this case, they're not. Um, Igwidsman and Jew is, is I, I like to think of them as they are the Victor Borga of today. Uh, this is a classical group that combines comedy and classical music into an uh, absolutely unforgettable performance. If you get a chance to go onto YouTube, we'll show a little video of them here in a second, but they have some incredible performances. They are lively and funny, and it's, uh, uh, it is definitely a, a, the perfect pitch, perfect, the pitch perfect, I know, 
way to end this year. Um, so uh, Igwitzman and Jew, this was a show that we were supposed to have this uh, last season as well. Uh, it is finally finding its home on May 5. Uh, their program, Play It Again, is their best hits of all of the different programs that they've done over the previous years. Here is a look at them in performance. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble! But you just have an need for speed You think you're so hilarious You shift your gears first position Grand Turismo is your mission But you're not fast, not furious Driving, driving You are simply driving me insane Fiddler, fiddler Only cause fiddles in your brain That's Igwitzman and June. They are seriously talented, seriously funny. They have not only been touring the world for years with their individual show, but they have been guests with the New York, the London, the uh, Berlin Philharmonic, uh, the Chicago Symphony. Uh, they are well loved in the classical world and, a, and a, a really fun show to wrap things up. So that is a quick look. We have 16 incredible performances yet to come in this year. Uh, for our uh, donors, the pre-sale begins now. Everything is live on the web page as we speak, as I speak. So get a chance to go home and, and there are some videos, there are some things that you can continue to look at to learn a little bit more about the upcoming events for this next year. And I guarantee you our goal for this year is to provide a safe and comfortable and happy space to re Acquaint yourselves with your friends and your neighbors at a performing arts event. Um, we have uh, a, a lot of great things to look forward to. And we're gonna, we have some new things that will be coming in in the next couple of weeks to help uh, uh, expedite the process for you to check in and to make the evening even easier for you uh, as you come to Lensic events. So uh, thank you uh, for all of your support. Uh, as I said, tickets go on sale now for all of our donors uh, beginning today. The public on sale begins next Thursday night on the 28th. And uh, if you have any questions, we are going to be around for a while, and we are super happy to see you all and hope that we will have you back at the Lensic very soon. Thank you again for coming this evening and, uh, again, for all of your support.